I am an earthling by birth. You're an earthling by birth? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's good. I don't know if this is any good for your, uh, for your target audience. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's see, and do you, I've been told that you like science fiction. I love science fiction. So what, do you have any favorite science fiction writers? Yes. Um, this is going to sound terribly old fashioned, but Isaac Asimov. Uh -huh. was one of my favourites, um, obviously Arthur C. Clarke, uh, Ray Bradbury is very good, the, um, over the years I'm trying to think, William Gibson. Uh, William Gibson. How about, tell me, can you tell us a little bit about some of your favourite aliens? Yeah, I knew this question was coming and I've been thinking about it. Now, obviously, Mork and Mindy, it's not going to cut it. Mork and Mindy are your favourite aliens. <laughs> yes, wow. Mork. Uh, so I'm actually trying to, uh, trying to think of some, some other aliens that... Uh, I thought about E.T. E.T. was interesting, but not very believable. Really? Mork and Mindy were more believable as aliens? Why, why is that? Why is that? <laughs> I think with Mork and Mindy, it was quite obvious <laughs> that it was satire. My favourite Martian, I used to like. Oh, my favorite. that's an old one, right? Yes. I used to watch that when I was a kid. Yep, and uh, let's see, I'm trying to think, who did they meet in Lost in Space? Well, what about these aliens makes them your favourite? What do they have to have? Do they have to have... Right. A, uh, a bit of wit, a bit, a bit of, of humour. Yes. So I didn't know that that was part of the requirements to be an alien. Yes, I think the ones I like have a bit of wit. I think they're a bit of, uh, they're somewhat, uh, I was about to say human. Uh, which somewhat is human. Somewhat human in that uh, they're not just a one dimensional personality. So I should say they're somewhat, they're conscious sentient beings of well rounded personality. Are we alone in the universe? Definitely not. Um, I think we've had this discussion before <laughs> many times, but uh, I have a strong belief that even though I don't think intelligent life is common, I think given how vast the universe is, I find it inconceivable that it's happened only once. And by it you mean? Intel the evolution of an intelligent technological society. Probably spacefaring, maybe only with the robots, but I think in the last 50 years we've started to make our impact on the local, um, the local solar system neighbourhood certainly, and the Pioneer probe has now left the solar system. Give us a few more hundred years and I presume there'll be all sorts of space junk flying off in all sorts of places, but space is really, really big, as you know, and the chance of us actually encountering another civilization. Uh, occupying the same space and the same time as we do is, I would say, impossible, almost close to impossible. Unless, of course, we're lucky enough that some technological aliens have left some artefacts on the surface of the moon or uh, on Mars or somewhere as a sort of an alarm system for when we, uh, when we finally do manage to break the, break the bounds of the Earth and actually live on the moon or Mars. Now, we're sitting in Sydney. Do you think Sydney is alive? Sometimes it feels like it, especially Redfern where we are here. <laughs> Redfern is alive. <laughs> how about Australia or how about the biosphere? The biosphere could well be, could well be alive. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the last two novels in the Foundation series of Isaac Asimov written much later, uh, where Gaia gets a good Guernsey. Is that right? Yeah, they're okay. fascinating. They're, they're, they're the, I, I like the whole all five of the Foundation novels, but I really enjoyed the last two. And of course, that is the idea that, uh, that in fact, the, the, galaxy or the, the galaxy looks after itself. Oh. As a, as a um, not quite a sentient being, but a being that works together. It just happens to work that way. A lot of people think of uh, aliens as somehow little gods. They know everything and they've been around, they're gonna solve all our problems. Yes. It sounds to me like a god. Yes, and uh, I think people invest aliens with all the things that they wish that somebody would just take responsibility for their lives, come in and sort everything out. Uh, and so in fact, of course, you... Are you guilty of that? No. Why not? What, are you special? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> just realistic. <laughs> I think when I was a kid, I might have, might have sort of thought about that, but I think I was more interested in seeing what the spaceships look like 